Uh, now we're going to turn to Burgundies at a good price. Letty Teague is here to tell us about this great 2010 vintage that has uh, hit the store shelves that we can all uh, take a part in. Uh, Letty, thanks so much for being here. Great to be here. So uh, I understand great is the adjective that you're using for this? I think it's pretty inescapable. And, and certainly, you know, there, there's been so much enthusiasm by retailers and importers and, and, uh, uh, and producers about this vintage. And even though all those same people love to hype a vintage, yeah. it's really true. I think it's really worth hyping. But you, know? you also say yeah. that when a vintage is labeled great, there's a sort of a mixed uh, a good and bad that goes along with right. it. How come? Right, right. Well, in the case of Burgundy, there's there's always going to be some. Um, it would it would be it, it, it's extraordinarily rare for there not to be some bad weather news, and there was a lot of bad weather at various times throughout the you know 2010. Um, uh, prior to the 2010 harvest, there was you know there 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 was rain, there was frost, you know there were all kinds of uh, um, uh, problematic things. But in the end, uh, which ended up making the crop very small, but uh, but the wines themselves, as the producers say, very very classic. You know, really 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 bright acidity, really just you know um, incredibly vibrant vivacious, really, and, and, and also very elegant, you know, sort of contrast to 2009, which was a big, ripe, um, it was very warm year, and something that uh, one producer told me, was the, the 2009s are wines for Americans. <laughs> Oh, no. We just have to get a dig in there. And no. people, you know, probably, I mean, obviously we all know that the weather and, and, and things like soil impact, right. but it really can be challenging for, for winemakers year after year. As you said, with this one, it was a challenging right. year, but it turned out to Burgundy be... And in in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very so, challenging. So tell us yeah. about the regions that uh, we're, right. we're talking about today. Well, the, the great news is, and, and what my what I decided to focus on, because these wines are actually in the market, the the, the great wines are not yet in the market, but these these basic wines, like the basic Bourgognes and, and the Puy Fousses and the, and, the, and the Macon Village, um, uh, from all over there, there are actually you know five subregions of Burgundy. The most famous of which is the Cote d'Or, and it's the one that people think about. They think mm -hmm. of you know, and 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 in fact, um, uh, this producer makes great wines in in, in the Cote d'Or. Uh, um, Yves Pierre uh, um, Pierre Yves Colem and uh, and also um, uh, Xavier Monod. But they also make really you know uh, they also make basic wines. You know the Bourgogne, which they may source from places like Merceau and Saint Aubin. But they're, and so they're terrific value. They're great winemakers making wines for twenty dollars a bottle. Wow. So yeah. tell us, uh, let's start with one that you really liked. Okay. Tell us about this. Okay, Pierre-Yves uh, uh, Collin, uh, he's a, a producer. He makes uh, terrific Merceau. He makes a, a Chassagne. This is a blend of his uh, vineyards in, in Puligny and, uh, and Saint-Aubin. Um, and it's just like, a, it's a really, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, I, I called it pearlescent because it's almost <laughs> like, it almost like shimmers, you know, and, and, and it has really, really great uh, um, acidity. The next wine um, is a, is a Puy Fousse. Um, Puy Fousse from the Maconnet, people think, you know, Macon Village. But mm -hmm. and, and Puy Fusse, it's to the south of the Cote d'Or. So you know, it's it, the wines are are, are less uh, vaunted, I guess, but but really great values. It's an old yeah, wine. Yeah, what is the price on, on these, these two? Are, everything here is about twenty-two dollars a oh, bottle. Oh really? Yeah. So it's wow. some dynamite value because you get you yeah. get you know you get um, great great producers working with some really you know terrific vineyards, you know, and wines that just they're not as prestigious. So they're you know they're not going to be they're going to be priced accordingly. You know. It tastes you know. tastes uh, worth and, and it. Zavion Monod and Zavion Mano also makes some great. Uh, um, White and, and red burgundies, Premier Cru burgundies. This is his basic Bourgogne as well, um, and and again, you know, just a really, really, really beautiful wine. Again, you know, acidity is key in 2010, and wines that have real liveliness on the palate. They're really they're terrific food wines, you know, and they're and they're wines that will last too because they have a really firm acidity and a, and a really great minerality. So and so when I, I understand from from reading your piece that some of these are flying off the shelves, so yeah, people I, really need to get into their, uh, their <laughs> wine merchants, know. right? But you, you mentioned they're great. Food Food wines, and as we come into the spring and summer, uh, should people be thinking of these when they go to you and know with fish and lighter dishes of the, of the season? Absolutely, absolutely, because they, they have all the you know um, characteristics of because it began, again the vi vivacity and the and the lightness, but 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 also some richness and depth. You know, it's not just a, they're not simple, so they're they're definitely uh, um, wines that go with food or drink as aperitifs. And I think it's getting very warm this weekend. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. so rush <laughs> out and, now. and buy yeah. any of these because, uh, as Lenny says, they're they're well worth it and certainly a, a great price. So thank you so, so much Thanks for joining so much us. Having 